Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. So we have today Kevin Costello from Perimeter Institute with us, and he's going to tell us about twisted supergravity and string field theory. Uh, Kevin, you have a total of 90 minutes. So go on. Okay. Thanks very much, Sabrina. I don't think I'll take uh, all of that time. So what, what I want to discuss today is um, well, I kind of want to spend most of the time surveying ideas about twisting supergravity and string theory, um, mostly based on work by these authors. So let me start by ex explaining what we're trying to do. Uh, So twisted supergravity or string theory so is so it's going to be an independently defined theory that captures BPS objects. In the physical string. So why why is one interested in doing this? So the hope is that by studying twisted string theory, we can answer basic answer you know, fundamental questions. In easier context. So questions such as what is M theory? Can we construct it? Can we prove duologies rigorously? And can we quantize supergravity to all orders? Now, I'm not saying I can answer all of these questions, but the point is once we work in this, in this twisted setting, things become a lot easier and these questions become kind of within reach. So for example, the question of what is M theory and can we construct it say in perturbation theory is, is then turned into a question about a certain infinite dimensional, infinite dimensional algebra, which I hope I will say a little bit about later. So before we get we get here, I want to um, talk about some more basic things. I want to try to explain what I mean by twisting supergravity and what I mean by twisting string theory, although certainly twisting string theory is much less well understood. Kevin, um, can you just tell me what you mean quantize supergravity to all orders? All orders in what? Um, just all, all orders in the loop expansion. So you mean super string theory. Supergravity is not, it's not supposed to be renormalizable, right? So 
What do you mean? Well, that? right, but it wouldn't. Um, it it's not supposed to be normalizable. Yet string theory more accurately predicts uh, a, a quantum theory fixing all the counter terms. And okay. that, that that I think answers my question. So you, it's yeah. in the context of string theory. Exactly. And well, I'm, I'm gonna. At the end of the talk, I'm going to state a result that in the twisted setting, even though it's still not normalizable, all the counter terms are fixed by a certain kind of stringy principle. Okay, thanks. So what is, what is twisting? So because twisting was introduced a long time ago by Witten, and then there's two parts. So the first one, what we say, the main step is the following. Take a supersymmetric theory. And choose Q, a supercharge, which is square zero. And the twisted theory, We, all we do is we add Q to the BRST operator. So there are too many things called Q. So then for instance, the local operators, are going to be the cohomology of this new object. So the key point is this cohomology is much smaller, typically. And there are fewer local operators. This means the theory really simplifies. Um, if Q prime is another supercharge, and Q, Q prime is some vector field, then this vector acts trivially in the twisted theory. So that in the twisted theory, some components of the stress energy tensor are now here is T exact. So this is another thing which makes the theory much simpler. Now, originally when people were studying twisting in the late 80s, Lots of the topological twists, and then all of the stress energy tensor is exact. But today, we're mostly going to be interested in holomorphic twists. These were originally studies in the 90s by Johansson and Nekrasov. 
than others. So in holomorphic twists, only some components of T are exact. So this works on for 2n, which I identify with cn, the coordinates zi, z bar i, in a homomorphic twist, translation in the z bar direction is exact. And this implies correlation functions of operators in the twisted theory are holomorphic. So this is just a, a reminder that general things about twisting, which I hope people are fairly familiar with. Um, one more thing I want to say is in Witten's original analysis, it was important that you change the spin of the fields. I'm not, I don't want to emphasize that today because we're often going to be working on flat space or on some special geometry where you already have a supercharge without changing the spin of the fields. Now, in those situations, you know, changing the spin of the fields does absolutely nothing. And all the content of twisting is this procedure of changing the BRST operator. Um, maybe there's one more quick thing to say is that um, typically local operators. in the holomorphic twist. These are what is counted by supersymmetric indices. So even if, even if you're not familiar with the language of the holomorphic twist, in a way you're familiar with, with these objects because when you take a supersymmetric index, it's going to be written in terms of some words, and those words are literally the local operators in the twisted theory. Uh, okay, any questions before I generalize, explain how to generalize this to supergravity? Yeah, so let, let me ask you, sorry, Martin, uh, what are yeah. the conditions on the operators O that you must impose so that the last equation holds? They, they must be BRST closed. With the oh, yeah, BRST. Yeah. Okay. And okay. then Thank you. The, the usual argument that's in Witten's eight, you know, early paper will well, this is a question. Uh, I have one more question. If, okay. mm -hmm. uh, is it guaranteed that this Q you're using for twisting commutes with QBRST so that yes, you can form the total complex? Yes, because that, that's what it means to have the, you know, when I, when I have a symmetry, that's, that's guaranteed to have. I see. Um, you know, the, the, admittedly, there, there could be subtleties in, in this analysis, which I don't want to go into. It, it can and does happen that the action of the supersymmetry on the space of local operators is really an L infinity action, so that the commutation of relations between different supercharges will only hold up to some coherent homotopies. Right? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm not sure if that's the kind of thing you had in mind. Thank you. Okay. So what about 
for supergravity. So here, supersymmetry is gauged. That means um, you know, just like in, in, in Maxwell theory, I've, I've gauged the local symmetry, so it's no longer a symmetry of the theory. And, you know, it could be a symmetry maybe if we impose some asymptotic boundary conditions, but otherwise, no. So instead, we have bosonic ghosts and the column C alpha for the gauged fermionic symmetries. So the claim is that the analog of twisting a supersymmetric field theory is given by these fields of vacuum expectation. So why is this? So the key point let's consider coupling to some theory, field theory. If we work in, in BV, which I hope, given the kind of homological nature of this seminar, I hope um, people are happy with, to each symmetry, so Q alpha, we get a canonical charge S alpha of ghost number minus one, so that Q alpha is S alpha. And here, this is the BV anti bracket. Now, if this was a familiar bosonic Poisson bracket, of course, this is be very standard. So just be the Noether current. But in the BV formalism, it, it's, you know, this idea extends. But now, because the bracket has a certain ghost number, the charge also has a ghost number. Now, in, in the way BRS, the way things work in BB is that the BRST operator is the bracket with S, where S is the action function. Let me put it a little Q there. So the twisting procedure is really replacing the original action
So in other words, what I wrote down earlier as, as twisting, you can think of it equivalently as I'm adding a new term to the Lagrangian, but it's a kind of funny term um, because it, it will mix fields and anti-fields in an unusual way. But that's okay. It's a totally fine term to add to the Lagrangian, the twisted theorem as to adding this term. So what has this got to do with the super ghosts? So, so general yoga of gauging tells us that if we gauge the supersymmetry, there is a term like C alpha S alpha Q. In other words, the ghost is coupled to the charge with the corresponding symmetry. And this happens, no matter what we're gauging, this happens in Yang Mills theory too. It's the same formula. And so for instance, if I take the DV anti-bracket with this expression, I, <coughs> I get the ghost times the, the symmetry. <coughs> And this is the kind of thing you would expect to find when I gauge any symmetry. So now you, here's the key point. If C alpha has a bet, then <clears throat> We get, you know, I'm thinking of coupling my super gravity theory to a field theory. So we then we get this term where I take the vacuum expectation value times this charge, so this, and this exactly means we add to the BRST operator. Okay, let's, let's yeah, uh, pause there for questions. Um, so I hope I haven't lost everybody. Probably it's all very familiar. Okay, so if, if there are no questions, so in some, so twisted supergravity we give the ghost has a bed. So in the supergravity path integral, e.g. on a compact manifold, this is just part of the region of integration. because you know, we have to integrate over the ghosts. So when we do the path integral, there will be contributions from 
was just super proud of the key. Sorry, I can ask a question though. So if you yeah. say it has a web, you see alpha is a, is a spinner, right? So normally webs are scalars. So how, how, how do you give a, a web to a spinner? Well, it's 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 a spinner, but it's a it's a commuting field. Yes. So it it it's not a Lorentz invariant. You know, it's a it's a commuting spinner field, and I just say it takes a constant value. Okay, but if I do a, a local Lorentz rotation, that constant value is not fixed, right? So... That that's right, but that's okay. Okay. It's like what? this is related to the fact that. Um, and when I do a holomorphic twist, I, I break the Lorentz group to, you know, SUN. So this is right. going to be fixed by SUN. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I guess I'm just asking because in the supergravity theory, are you breaking some symmetry by giving it a V? What 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 symmetry? Are you You're not assuming there's some isometry. It's just some general supergravity theory. Yes. Um, yeah, but. But, but you could do this, this in other contexts too, right? You could work with the supergravity theory where a scalar field has a certain profile. And okay. that might, might break the isometry group, maybe it might break translations to rotations or something like that. Okay. This is so, kind of okay. similar. Okay, thanks. So. So what is twisted supergravity? So this is a question that is most interesting to ask in high dimensions, because you know if you know what twisted supergravity is in say 11 dimensions, by playing the usual games, you'll get a pretty good idea of what it is in every other dimension. So the answer, I'll, I'll give you an answer. The answer for type 2b is, is the nicest one. So I'll start with that. Um, we had a conjecture. But you know, this is also closely related to work of Polya. In fact, our conjecture really relies on work of Polya, some published work of Necrosov, uh, Nathan's paper with Bafa. So our conjecture is the holomorphic twist twist of type 2b on a Clavian fivefold is equal to Kodaira Spencer theory. which is the space-time theory. of the topological P model. So more generally, we conjecture this holds with a full String theory. So let me give you some evidence. Um, for open strings, this was proved by Bollier before our work. And, and I learned from a recent paper of Nathan, this was also an unpublished paper, unpublished work of Necrosov. 
that the twist of the theory on a D9 is equal to holomorphic transcendence. For closed strings, this is much harder. It's much harder just because supergravity is, is harder than supersymmetric field theory, but I hope we can get the names of the authors. This was yeah, Severi and Williams. Prove this using pure space. This is a quite a recent result. So they took the pure spinner description of type 2b and then analyzed what would happen if you give the super goes to VEV and found a bunch of fields dropped out and it became Godara's Spencer theory. But they do this at the level of the free theory. They were not yet able to pin down to check that the interactions were correct. So for 2a, you know, there's an SU4 invariant twist. Which lives on say or two times y, y is a cy4. And this was conjectured to be the A model on or two tensor B model on y. And this is kind of really a consequence of the first case because it's related. to be by T duality. And the most interesting case is 11D supergravity. Well, you know, let, me, let me mention another interesting case first. Type one, or heterotic. This is going to be SO32 holomorphic transcendence on a clavier fivefold plus part of Kadari sensor. So, this is a nice example because we could check that this was the right answer by directly computing in the heterotic strip. This is a paper I wrote with Brian Williams that this can be seen by studying heterotic strip, so rather the chiral part. which consists of five beta gamma systems, 32 fermions, and BC posts. So it's a kind of a fun computation. You take a chiral hydraulic string, and you look at its spectrum of states, and they reproduce precisely this, the spectrum of SO32 holomorphic transcendence plus Kadar's nice theory. And you can also check um, 
you can check, we were able to check certain things about how they scatter. Now, so the most interesting version of all of this is M theory. So here, there's two, two things you can, you can look at. The minimal twist, which is the one closest to the physical theory. Say on all cross C5. This was studied by uh, Vandrun. Barry Williams, and they found found a theory which, in a sense, is or very closely related to. Passes exceptional super algebra E five slash ten. So I think this is a remarkable result because it implies, for instance that the large n indices of M2 and M5 rings should be characters of this algebra. And if you check it, they actually are. And there's a maximal twist, something like OR7 times C2, which was studied by me, Connor, and Ager. So I had some conjecture and they were able to prove it. So here, basically it's controlled by Hamiltonian vector fields. On C2, these are homomorphic. <laughs> Okay, so this is just, so I've kind of sketched out the landscape of what, what people know. Like, what are the twists of various supergravity theories? And we find these kind of, you know, answers which I find kind of fascinating. And we also find the usual, I mean, to the extent we've been able to check it, the usual dualities you would expect hold. You can go from M theory to 2A and 2B by dimensional reduction and T duality, and, and it all works out kind of as you would expect. Um, so the next thing I want to discuss is how how one might want to try one, one could try to quantize these things. But before before I do so, let's uh, let me pause for questions. So just uh, I, for 2B, there are obviously 32 supersymmetries, and you're choosing the 16 of uh, the two types to be the same twisting. Is that right? Oh, we've got a screen of all this. Uh, um, so you, you, you still preserve an SU5 or something like that. Is that you, you still preserve an SU5? And then I, I think. <clears throat> How does it go? Once you, once you ask to preserve an SU5, there are four supercharges, and then kind of, I think it doesn't matter which one. That's... I'm just asking, so is there some meaning to twisting in other ways? So, so normally you could have like an A twist or a B twist. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, do, I do, I do, yeah. So in, um, so one way to say this, in two, let's say in the 2B example, 
Um, <clears throat> Well, we choose Q for the holomorphic twist. So Q is actually is in the one comma zero supersymmetry algebra right. because because he wanted to preserve the G nine <coughs> to use Beaulieu's result, and then. <coughs> In the twisted theory, we expect residual supersymmetry, which is the Q cohomology of the original superisometry. So it looks like this, we have SO10, and here are my 32 supercharges. And so you can compute this cohomology quite easily. This and this Q cohomology does appear in Cadaver Spencer theory. So then, then we can further twist. So the, the further twists. Amount to adding a quadratic superpotential, oh, sorry, not linear superpotential, or making some directions non commutative. Um, so the further twists get you pretty close. If you make some directions non-commutative, that gets you pretty close to the A model. So you can, there's a twist which looks like, um, you know, eight A model directions and one B model direction, for instance. Okay, okay. thanks. Are there any other questions before I try to try to discuss how one might try to quantize? So I want to try to quantize these series, but without without using string field theory, despite thinking of them as, as quantum field theories in space time. And of course. Say in the type TB example, because it comes from a string theory, we expect there, you know, even though it's non normalizable, you should be able to do that. And perhaps surprisingly, we find that you can, um, and you can prove that with, without having to do the string field theory. So let me just say what the Kind of algebraic problem one runs into when trying to quantize this. So local operators in a homomorphic theory, like we've been discussing, are generally like co-chains of L, like this, 
Well, cocaines means the algebra. Cochains and L is an infinite dimension. The algebra. E.g., for example, for, for holomorphic transcendence on C5, L is my gauge algebra joined five variables. So essentially, so L is gauge transformations preserving the field configuration A and zero. For in our Spencer theory, let me see theory, L is C5. Well, L is some pretty big thing because it has contributions from all the fields. And there are lots of fields in this theory. But L contains divergence free vector. Which are expressions like Q I Z divided by Z I. And for M theory on or cross C5, L turns out to be equal to Cass's algebra E5 vector, which contains, roughly consists of divergence free vector field. Speaking. Okay, so, so I've, I've written down in, in this homological language the BRST complex of local operators. So, why is that relevant? Well, when we quantize, we can worry about. It. At anomalies and also ambiguities, which are like possible counter terms. So these all live. Because these are terms in the Lagrange, and we get them by integrating the local operators over some descent procedure. And the Lie algebra cohomology of this interdimensional Lie algebra. So we conclude if we know enough about. This infinite dimensional algebra cohomology, we can check, prove there is a unique quantization. So, problem computing this.
is very, very hard. Um, for instance, there's been some recent work where people have been studying this in the whole of twist of n four with the hope of finding states that are not present that you only see at finite end. And you know, this is a very interesting kind of algebraic problem and it tells you a lot about the physics. But since the Lie algebra is infinite dimensional, this coaching complex is cohomology we're computing is a very big thing. And to compute this cohomology, we, we have to know something about some very large rank matrices. And it's just a computationally very difficult thing to do. But there are some cases where we can get some traction and prove that um, prove that there exists a unique quantization. Okay, one, one, one point about this that I find kind of exciting, it would be really great to show that we can construct, at least in perturbation theory, quantization of 11 dimensional supergravity. And it's nice that we've turned this into a problem about the Lie algebra cohomology of E510. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily make it easier, but we rephrase the problem entirely in terms of algebra. So let me say, how to do this for type 2b. The quantizing 2b. So the starting point, Lode, Quillen and Siegen a long time ago proved a very nice result. How to compute the Lie algebra cohomology of, say, GLN join any number of variables that then goes to infinity. And the answer they find is that the single trace operators can be expressed in terms of closed differential forms. on C5. So just as an aside, if one is interested in general in like, you know, how to compute the local operators in the holomorphic twist of a theory, this load equivalent Siegen theorem is great because it, you can immediately read off the answer at the large end. So more formally, I should remind you that the fields of Kadair sensor theory are the kernel of Dell inside of the BRST operator. is D bar. So the, the load equivalent Siegen theorem tells us, tells us that any Lagrangian, any single trace Lagrangian, in holomorphic transcendence is equal to 
Well, we can get such a thing by turning on a background field for Gennaro Spencer 3. That gives you exactly all. So while well, this works for GLN slash NT, which is going to be important. The reason I don't want to go into the, the point is that there's an anomaly in homomorphic transcendence theory which manages for GLN slash N. So it's better to use the supergroup. So the strategy is going to be. If I look at the open string sector, we've determined the possible anomalies and counter terms, terms of differential forms. If I look at the closed string sector, since the fields themselves are differential forms, the, we can also write the operators in the closed string sector in terms of differential forms. And then the coupling between them makes everything cancel, which tells me there's gonna be a unique way to quantize the couple system. So it's like this. It's this unique way to quantize coupled open closed P model. C5. So the idea of proof so a possible anomaly our counter term and the open string sector is built in the kernel del in the closed string sector so I we're going a little fast here since fields, uh, things that are in the kernel of Dell, the Grandians are in the dual space. Mm. Or those which are linear in the fields. forms model the image so you know, so open string things are built from a bunch of copies of the kernel model closed strings from a bunch of copies of forms model of the image and coupling between them which is this this amplitude Is the map so when we take homology. While we're, you know, I take the cohomology with respect to this operator, we're just left with with the RAM cohomology. Yeah. 
you can see. Okay. Sorry, I realized that argument got a little bit hard to follow. And uh, maybe I'll draw a little picture. So if I if I want to have a counter term, which maybe looks like this. There's a differential given by the anti bracket with the disk amplitude. And the point is that the co cohomology of this complex vanishes. Okay, let's just see. <clears throat> okay. So I know this argument is a little elaborate, but what it tells you is that by purely algebraic arguments, we can fix all the counter terms in Canary Spencer theory by asking that they couple consistently to the open string sector. Um, the anal analogous thing for other systems is like M theory is still, still open and seems to be very hard, but I think it will be very exciting if we can make progress in that direction. So any any questions? Would be um. Okay, well, maybe you say one more thing, just to really repeat myself a little bit. In summary. So string field theory should give us a solution of the quantum master equation our sense of theory. Yeah. It should give us a solution to the quantum master equation because the quantum master equation comes from the geometry of the modular agreement surfaces. But this is an alternative argument. Produces one. by showing that open and closed anomalies. The counter terms just cancel with each other. <clears throat> um, so one can wonder how, whether this alternative argument can be applied in other string theories too. Okay, so I think I think I'll I'll stop there. Okay. Um, so first of all, let us thank Kevin for this wonderful talk. We have plenty of time for questions and discussions. So please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. I, I can ask a question. So about this counter term. So these are counter terms for topological, the topological theory, or how are they related to counter terms for the full supergravity theory? Yeah, that's a really great question. I mean, it, it, look, so suppose you had fixed a collection of counterterms for the full supergravity theory, 
then then by twisting, you would find a collection of counter terms for the twisted theory. So by saying that the, the counter terms of the twisted theory are unique, this provides some constraint on those in the physical theory. So are they related to F term, F counter terms? I mean, I'm just trying to guess what it could be. Counter terms um, supersymmetry? Or? Oh, <clears throat> that's a question that's kind of tricky to answer, actually. Um, so if you kind of want to think about what, what are the kind of counter terms we have, so in Kodara Spencer theory, so the local operators are built from certain ghosts. Like the ghosts for holomorphic vector fields. So if you want to figure out what, you know, I'll call it C, I or something like that. And if you want to figure out what this means in the physical theory, you will have to go through the twisting process, which was analyzed in this paper of Severian Williams. So CI is gonna to correspond to something in the physical theory. And I'm, I'm guessing it's some kind of gravitino, you know, or something like that. Perhaps the derivatives of CI, CI itself. What's that, sorry? Perhaps, the, perhaps some derivative of CI rather than CI itself. Oh, because it's divergence free. Point. Uh, like the zero mode, perhaps, could be. It's like yeah. if you had the, the, the derivative of C is, 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 the, is the gauge, you know. Uh, ah, okay, okay, okay. Yes. That sounds plausible. I have to say, I'm a bit shaky on the on these on the details because I haven't read this Sibari Williams paper. Pretty dumb. Um, so to answer Nathan's question, you know, if I was to build a local operator in Cartier Spencer theory as a word in these ghosts, you could, in principle, go translate this to some local operator with non-zero ghost number in to be built from the Gravitini and the ghost fields, and then and then you know. The counter term is related to this by descent. I'm not exactly sure where you would end up, but I think it would be. Yeah. Some reasonably general expression. I don't know, David, do you, do you have any in, insider guesses as to where, where these things would end up in the physical theory? Yeah, I'm not sure. It might, it might be somewhat scheme dependent as a question, too. That's true, yeah. Um, Actually, it would be very interesting to try to pin this down on one reporter. Mm -hmm. I think that, that, would, that would be something doable and informative. Right. And so it is, you could correct interactions to cancel this anomaly, right? When you, when you said it, this homology problem can vanish. Yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. Saying, saying the homology problem can be solved means that you can tune, tune the interactions to cancel any anomalies, like the loop level interactions in a unique way. 
I think it would be totally interesting, for example, to write down an, a general uh, sort of like Anjan for the square gravity theory with, with target curvature terms and twist it. Yes, absolutely. Would, then get constraints of which terms you can have in the curvature. Yes, 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 absolutely. Which kind of That's... vectors are viable in the physical theory. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's exactly what we want to do. It seems hard. It seems pretty hard, though. Yeah. I mean, perhaps one can look at sim simpler things first. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. Like, like five DM meals. There's only there are. Constraints on the effective action of Euclidean like mills or something like that. Yes. Like from, from it having a, a good twist. I don't know. I mean, if supergravity is too scary, there, might, there are definitely examples of quantum field theories which have a unique completion. Yeah, I think for 10 dimensional superior mills, the possible counter terms are known, at least the half PPS one. That one, that should be right. Uh, and surely that, that statement you just made is related to the argument I made with the Ludwig von Siegen theorem. Like in, in that case, you, know, you can compute all local operators and all work for Simon's theory quite easily, and they're all related to the stress tensor. Or, or kind of higher stress tensors you get from coupling to background supergravity fields. My question, which I think is, is a little fun, is if, I mean, from theory, there are no space filling brains. So uh, if you want to somehow use your arguments for situations where the defects are uh, of some dimension. Yes. I, absolutely, but it's 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 pretty. It seems a little, much more conceptually challenging for obvious reasons. I mean, it seems hard to. Do you put? Do you have a lot of defects everywhere? Do you just fix the location of the defects? It's not going to affect the counter terms in generic places. I. I'm not sure how to think about that. Uh, I have a question. So, in, in, in the case of, of type 2b, ADSR closes 5 background, um, what is the principle for for taking the supercharge? Like, uh, can I, there is a unique, I mean, there are more than one choice of supercharge which will lead to different types of twisting. What are those? Is this classified? Right. So, well, they're basically orbits, right? So, uh huh. Uh, so your supercharger is going to, in that case, is going to complexify everything. So it's an element of PSL, four slash four, this fermionic, and it's satisfied Q squared equals zero. Um, but then you want to take Q up to the action of the bosonic part. It's SL4 plus SL4. Um, so the data of Q, so, so the holomorphic based. Now, what's Q? It's just a matrix. Q is of rank one. Let me say zero slash one. So the image of Q is rank one from the onyx of space and and but you can also take supercharges of higher rank and that will give you further twists um, 
Um, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Thank, thank you. And I should say, I should have mentioned this earlier. You one could certainly try to do this for supergravity in ADS5 and S5. I think that's a really interesting thing to try to do directly. You know, presumably using the pure spinner formalism is the way to go. Um, the, if one wants to try to do this kind of game with this string, it's pretty challenging to do it with the RNS string because the space-time supercharges live in the Roman sector. It's kind of hard to give them a bet. <clears throat> Um, so by VEV, you mean uh, re re replacing the goals by kidney spinners? Or, or, or does not need to be kidney spinner? Uh, yes, well, I want to, you know, I want to take a Roman state corresponding to the ghost in supergravity. And then I just want to work with the women's surfaces decorated with a large number of such Roman, Roman functions. Oh, okay, I see. But I mean, a pure spinner formulas, for example, uh, would it be okay if I replace the pure spinner ghost by a kidney spinner? Yeah, I think that's yeah, exactly. I think so. I, I think I think that's the kind of thing. I mean, you should look at this paper of Severi and Williams. I think that's what they do for pure spinner supergravity. They do something like that. But they do for the string or so only fields? Like only they, 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 they do it only at the space time level. Uh -huh, I see. But I, I'm, I'm wondering whether you can implement the same procedure for the pure spinner string. Uh -huh. OK, thank you. Do we have any more questions? Maybe I have one more question. Um, uh, in Cordero Spencer theory, <clears throat> you have this strange kinetic term, which is sort of non-local. Is it clear how it comes out of this twisting procedure? Like you start with here with normal kinetic term, and then then you get this one over partial bar. Is, does it have some uh, explanation? Well, it's it's related to the weirdness that you find in type two B when you talk about the Roman Roman five form flux. Um, how does that work? So I think I'm trying to remember, but isn't there some something where you, you want to take your, your dynamical field to be a self to a closed five form? Right. And then you know, the, the, this problem in Clara Spencer theory, it, it, it arises exactly for a four comma one form. So the dynamical field is a closed four comma one form. So I think it's it. So I think you see the same issue already in type two physical gravity. I see. So is, uh, is the five form the only thing which survives the twist? Like that's why. Oh. No, the, no, the, uh, um, the fields, <clears throat> um, so the fields of Cadara Spencer theory are you know, closed differential forms of various degree. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're related to the Roman Roman forms decorated by you know, the metric or the gravitino in some complicated way. Mm -hmm. um, but just, just like in, in, in 2B, um, you, this problem of asymmetric form be closed and self-dual only, only happens for the thing in the middle. 
because for, for other things you can, you know, instead of asking for something to be closed, you can make it exact. Mm -hmm. I see. That there's something similar in Kadara Spencer theory. I don't know if this is useful information, but so in string field theory, the five form and the three form and the one form all appear in the same way. So the problem that affects the five form affects all the Ramon Ramon fields, not just the five form. Let's see. So if you were to write Kitter Spencer theory in string field theory, you as a string field theory of the B model, it would be as you said, you would find a closed form of various degrees. Um, but but then if you forget about string field theory and use supergravity, you can resolve that problem by asking that some of those forms are exact. And I think you can do the same thing in type to B, right? So, sorry, I don't know if you're asking me, I don't know the answer, but I mean, in string field theory, there are these all these different ways to traduce grad Ramon Ramon fields. Probably sent, if Ashok is there, maybe say something. Mm. But, but I think all I wanted to say is that the problems that affect the five form, which you see in the ordinary field theory, when you try to write the, in the string field theory, it affects all the Ramon Ramon fields and not just the five form. Right. That's all I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, and, and I agree. When, when, you, <clears throat> when you write it in terms of the string field theory of the B model, it's quite similar. <clears throat> yeah, that the field satisfy constraint. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I have another question. Uh, so why the, the, the twist should be holomorphic when you go to the supergravity context? Why not consider spin seven twist, for example? Uh, you can if you want to, yeah. Um, let's see. So supergravity. They spin seven twist of, of 2B or 2A. Yes, you can. So, for example, one of the twists I mentioned for M theory of this is so really this twist isn't very under G G two. You can put it on a manifold whose holomorphism is G two times S U two. Um, so you cer you certainly can do that kind of thing. The the reason I want to focus on on the, the holomorphic twist is because this is this the supercharge, which is in a sense closest to the physical theory. So in the holomorphic twist, the smallest possible number of components of the stress energy tensor are killed. Mm -hmm. And then you can typically, or another, another way to think about it, um, you know, in, this, in the space of pure spinners, in the space of square zero supercharges, the holomorphic twist is a, is a least generic one. And the ones you might be interested in, you can get by small perturbations of it. So that means that these other twists, the other twists like the spin seven one, are typically further twists of the holomorphic one. Oh, I see. Thank you. So maybe I have one more question, uh, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the way you formulated the twist for uh, supergravity, it's sort of background dependent, right? Because uh, you have to choose that background. Uh, you need to give baths to the um, ghosts, and then, then you perform the twist. So the right. Polaris Spencer theory or whatever other um, twisted theory obtain is background dependent. Is there, is it sensible to search on the twisted side for some background independent completion of these or uh, it's a nonsensical question? No, that, that, I mean, that's a really good question actually. So, so let's take 2B 
And you know, once I choose my, my, my super ghost, that co really corresponds to choosing a complex structure for my mm -hmm. space time manifold. Um, now, the fields of Godard Spencer theory, the way the point of Godard Spencer theory is that it includes variations of complex structure. So that that so that that's dynamical. So in other words, the back, the supergravity background you've chosen, you know, that, that can be varied in a dynamical way in Godard Spencer theory. Um, So then I suppose the question you're asking is, you know, in the topological string, can, can one give the formulation of it, which doesn't depend on starting with some background clavier manifold? Yeah. And people have studied this. There's a paper of Witten oh, from, I forget when, um, I, I think on background independence of the topological string. And yes, it, it, it's not fully settled, but it's a direction that has been studied. Okay. Thank you. Um, actually, so do you think that the effect of the twisting on the pure spin of string would just be up to add the supercharge to be a differential of the pure spin of string? That would be reasonable, right? I mean, I, I, I'm honestly not as familiar with the pure spinner super string as I should be, but yes, it sounds reasonable. Yeah, I think that's right for, the, at least for the open string, I think it, it's clear that it works. For the closed string, I'm not 100% sure how to do it. Oh. So Nathan, string, do, yeah. do you know if you do this for the open string, do you get holomorphic transcendence? Yeah. Um, so I, I just wrote a paper maybe six months ago about something like that. Oh, yes, like, of course, you did. Yes. Yeah. So for the closed string, I don't know. So maybe you can help with that. For the closed string, I don't know what to get. But uh, I guess the hope is that you land on on the, um, what do you call it, BCOV or whatever. Yeah. Equals five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's straightforward. I mean, you just show, I mean, as you said, you, the, the, the cohomology focuses on things which only depend on holomorphic directions. So that reduces you to massless states. And then you're essentially just with open super Yang mills with no dependence on the on those extra five directions. And actually it's nice to compute scattering amplitudes. So I'm, I mean, as you probably know, the scattering amplitudes of, of those states are very simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually finding scattering amplitudes which are nice to compute in a robotic theory would be quite useful. It's essentially just topological amplitudes. I mean it's it's the d equals five version of the of the topological amplitude. I don't know if that's I, I don't know if that's been studied. So it's kind of same things which only have a lomorphic moment. It's kind of interesting. Right. right, but it includes, for example, the 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 usual d equals four topological, you know, the f the r squared f to the 2g minus 2, but it's a more general version of that. So it's, it's on a d equals 5 Calabial, uh, Calabial fivefold instead of Calabial threefold. Yes. Okay, if there are no further questions, uh, let us thank Kevin again for this talk and wonderful discussion. So let me stop the recording.